Hi, everybody. Welcome back to season two, episode four of The Daily Ram. I'm your host, Gianna Cambria, and with me we have... Your other host, Evan McAllis. How have you been, Evan? It's been a while. It has been a while. I've been doing okay. I've been trying to hold it down for the holiday season. Great. Yeah, me too. Well, talking about the holiday season, this is our last episode of 2020, so we'll see you guys in 2021. Speaking of which, let's get right into our first segment with our producer, Sarima, who did a small business Saturday with her good friend. Hi everyone, it's Sarima, one of your producers here at The Daily Ram, and welcome to Small Business Saturday. Today, my guest and friend, Danny Pine, is here to talk to us about her small business. And I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for stopping by. Can you tell us a little bit about your business and just what it is you sell and your brand in general? Yeah, so uh, my business is called Danny the Brand. Um, I pretty much make everything myself. I started off with just doing artwork. Uh, I am an artist, so I was just working with paintings and then I wanted to kind of branch out into like home decor and lifestyle. So um, my brand, I do like to focus on doing things eco-friendly. So I make my own labels and everything. I don't like to use plastic. I use paper, so everything's biodegradable. So I had started out with the resin coasters. I had never worked with that medium before and I had a lot of fun. I mean, there's so many different possibilities that you can make with them. and. So I started out with that and then I branched out into jewelry. So I made these little necklaces. Mm. Um, yeah. and, um, I do have some artwork pieces right now. I have some watercolor on the site. So I did, um, these are some of my paintings that I've done. Um, so I did kind of like fall back on the paintings. I'm like, well, I know people like my paintings, so I'm going to have those on the site too. I learned that doing custom things, you're giving people exactly what they want and you're not wasting money on supplies or products that aren't necessarily in demand. Um, I'm actually always like looking to build and grow my business. That's why I did name it um, Danny the Brand, just because I didn't want to put myself in any certain category. Um, right now I am mostly focused on like artwork and home decor, so things that you can like have in your room, have in your house. So on Etsy, it's just Danny the brand, um, no periods or anything in there. But on my Instagram, it is Danny dot or period the brand. So you can see all my updates on there, everything that I drop, um, I put in the shop. So. Okay, great, thank you. Um, I just wanna thank Danny again for stopping by and uh, telling us all about her lovely business. Um, so this concludes this week's Small Business Saturday and I will see you guys next time, bye. Okay, thank you guys. Wow, Srima, that's a great small business that your friend has. I'm definitely gonna check it out right after this episode airs. All right, and jumping right into the next segment, our producer Leah has given us some of her favorite holiday movie suggestions. So let's check it out. Hi everyone, my name is Leah, and today I'm going to talk about my top three holiday movie picks. All three of these are classic films that I've watched since I was little with my family, so they definitely have a special place in my heart. I love the genre of comedy, so all three of these will definitely give you a laugh and will put you in the giving spirit. So without further ado, here are my top three holiday movie picks. At number one, I would put A Christmas Story. It's a classic film and it has the, the voice of Gene Shepard, which he is just an amazing actor. And I just love how timeless all of the jokes are in that movie, such as when the one character, I think his name is Flick, he gets his tongue stuck on the telephone pole and also just the quote, you'll shoot your eye out. Stuff that you'll always remember from your childhood. And I watch it every year with my family. It's kind of hard to beat. But coming in at number two would be a bit of a newer Christmas movie. It's, I'd say, goes down as a classic, even though it wasn't made way back when, but it stars Will Ferrell and it is Elf. I think that this storyline is so funny, but the greatest part of this movie is the soundtrack, uh, especially the songs Pennies from Heaven and Baby It's Cold Outside. Those are two that will just always be associated with the movie and I 
watch this movie every year as well and even when it's not the holiday season um, plus the snowball fight and the narwhal scene are just wonderful and so funny and then my number one holiday movie would have to be home alone it features one of my favorite actors joe pesci so that's a plus but this movie just always made me dream of living alone when I was little. I don't know if anyone else felt that way, but like when you were too young to be home alone and you watched this movie, you just wanted to be home alone all the time because Kevin's life looked so fun, minus like the break-in and the near death, you know, it, it, it just looked so much fun and he always was having such a great time. I love the entire series, but my favorite would have to be the first movie. It's just unmatched, the comedy in that one and, and the acting is just phenomenal. But I still wonder how they kind of left Kevin home alone for so many movies after. I don't really know how you make that mistake once and then keep on making it, but I guess they did it for the film. <laughs> um, but those are my top three holiday movie picks. Uh, there are plenty of other honorable mentions if you would, but I'll keep this short and sweet so you could go enjoy your holiday and I hope you have a great one. So happy holidays, everyone. Gianna, what's your favorite holiday movie? Mine is Elf. What's yours? You know, I can't go wrong with the Polar Express. It's a oh, classic. It's a great movie. Our next segment is our career advising help with one of our seniors, Chase Hoffman. He's unfortunately graduating this semester, but it was an honor having you on our team, Chase, and I'm gonna miss you so much. Best of luck in your future, and let's get right into your video. Hi everyone, this is Chase here. So uh, the end of the semester is upon us, and if you're a graduating senior like myself, class of December 2020, or if you're a current student looking for a spring internship, you know, better than most how stressful this time of the year can be. And as many of us know, this year has been all the more stress inducing thanks to the COVID pandemic. It's true that lots more opportunities are going remote, but that also leaves room for a lot more competition, which can be daunting at best. So I sat down with Jenna Vizzino, one of the career education specialists at URI's Center for Career and Experiential Education, to hear some of her tips and tricks on how to go about the job or internship hunt during a global pandemic. For the internship world, it really truly has just been um, all remote. So I've noticed that the students that have majors underneath the Harrington School have been pretty successful in finding internships, whereas some of my colleagues in that are CESs for other career clusters they're noticing that it's um, a little bit more difficult. Actually, my, my search strategy wouldn't be any different. It would still first, you know, check out job boards. So job boards are like your Indeed, Glassdoor, LinkedIn, or Handshake, which is URI's job board. What's great about Handshake is, I would say 90% of the um, career centers nationwide are using the same platform. So when a company builds their profile, they do it once and then they indicate what majors and schools they want to recruit from. We still offer all the same services that we did prior. Um, just the only difference is that we've turned a lot of it to remote or virtual. So we do offer one day a week in our main location in Roosevelt Hall, um, the South Lobby where um, students can drop in and they can meet with a career education specialist about anything, whether it's about resumes, cover letters, LinkedIn, um, searching for an internship, wanting to gain academic credit for an internship, um, writing uh, personal statements for applying to graduate school. Students can go into Starfish, look at their network section and see who their CES is if they don't already know who that, that person is. They can uh, click on our faces and then see our availability of when we're offering um, appointments. All of us are offering either 15 or 30 minute appointments, which are great. So sometimes you just have a quick question, so that's a 15 minute appointment. And then sometimes you have, you need some more, um, some more discussion, so a 30 minute appointment. Thank you so much for the great advice, Chase, and I'm looking forward to see what you accomplish in your future. All right, jumping into our next segment, our producer, Sydney, followed a tutorial from the late great painter, Bob Ross. Let's see how it turned out. Uh, 
Oh, hi. I didn't see you there. My name's Sydney. And if there's one thing that keeps me warm during this holiday season, it's painting. Now, and there's no one better to learn to paint from than Bob Ross. So today, join me on a journey as we learn to paint together. So for this video, we're going to be following Bob Ross's Shades of Grey painting. And for that, you'll need something to paint on. I used a canvas, but you could also use a sturdy sheet of paper. You'll need a palette. I used a paper plate. And then you'll also need some paint. And then you'll need paint brushes or a painting knife specifically is what he uses throughout most of the video. And then something to clean the brushes with and put water in. And that's pretty much it. So I set up my canvas and I'm going to mix the paint, which he says like what colors I need. But let's just, let's just get started. So let's take the almighty brush here. And we'll take a little bit of this gray color out, beat it into the bristles. And let's start with an almighty sky here. Just let it work around and play. Great big things happening here. Just let them fall right out of your brush. Let's begin pulling them like this, just to give an indication of light slipping through there. It looks more like light pollution than beams of light. <laughs> just let that brush continually go in circles. That's probably the biggest suggestion I can give you that will help you. Let it continually go in circles. Otherwise, it'll look like it's raining up. And let's put a few little happy clouds in here that are a little bit more distinct. And that'll push everything else back. There we go. And just let these little clouds float around the sky. So let's start here. And we'll just use the same gray mixture, just blue and brown. And let's go right over here and drop in a fantastic big old mountain. Just let him wander around there. Very little paint. We take off all the excess paint. Scrape that canvas hard. Now with a large brush, we'll pull that down. There we go. Already we begin to have a basic mountain shape. Alrighty, now we'll highlight that mountain. Here I'll take some white, just titanium white. So we'll put a little highlight, oh, maybe right there. And then light's gonna strike right along this edge. Yeah, that gives us a nice quick little basic mountain. Let's put one on the other side. Might as well have some good practice here. Let's come right up here. Oh, well, almighty mountain. All right, let's just drop a little evergreen right here. And I'm using a color that's very, very close to the background mountains. So they look far, far away. Now, let's take, put a little bit of reflection into the water. I've taken a little bit of the tree color, and I'm just going to gently pull down, straight down. Let's make some happy little evergreen trees and we'll make them with the almighty palette knife here. Now, we're gonna take, load just a tiny bit of paint right on the point of the knife and touch. So we'll take a dark color on the one inch brush here. And we'll throw in some little bushes. These are just the shadows for the bushes. Okay, now, push off all these beautiful little leaves. Just let them hit. And I've always wanted to live in a in a beautiful mountain range like this. So let's build a house. We've got to have a house. We'll make the back eave of the house first. Just like so. All right. Maybe just to play a little here, let's throw a little tree right up through here. I think we just about have a finished picture. A little bit of oil here. We'll throw a little signature on there. This is a fantastic painting because it uses only gray and white. So on behalf of all of us here, you have a super day. Now, I don't want to put him down or anything, but I think this looks pretty good. So thank you guys for joining me today in my Bob Ross painting challenge. Uh, it came out nice. It's good. Happy holidays. Thank you so much, Sydney, for showing us your painting. It is definitely worthy of the Bob Ross name. Jumping into our next segment, let's see how Allie decorated some of her holiday cookies. Evan, my favorite cookies to decorate during the holidays are gingerbread houses with my family. What's yours? I love the Pillsbury Doughboy cookies you get to stop and shop with little snowmen on. 
Those are so good. I make them with my housemates all the time. All right, so let's tune into Allie's baking. Hello, and welcome to The Daily Ram. I'm Allie Magnus, and today I'm gonna to be teaching you how to bake some holiday cookies. Let's get started. Okay, first you're gonna preheat your oven to 350 degrees. And you're gonna take your flour and your baking powder and you're gonna combine them together. Next you're gonna put your flour mixture to the side and then you're gonna grab another bowl and you're gonna incorporate your sugar, your eggs, your vanilla, and your salt and butter. Now you can take, I'm gonna use a liquid mixer. Now we're going to take our flour mixture and we're gonna pour it into our cream mixture. And once again, we're gonna take my nifty little tool here and we're gonna mix it up. Now, you're gonna take your combined mixture and you're gonna dump it out onto either plastic wrap or parchment paper and you're gonna wrap it up and put it in the fridge to cool. So now we're gonna make some gingerbread while our sugar cookie dough is in the fridge. Let's get to it. We're gonna take our butter and we're gonna pour that into our bowl. Three quarters of a cup of brown sugar, two thirds a cup of molasses. We're gonna use my nifty tool again to mix everything together. Crack an egg, put it in there. We're gonna take three and a half cups of flour. A little bit of salt. No. Use ground ginger. Tablespoon of ground ginger. Tablespoon of cinnamon. Half a teaspoon of allspice. Half a teaspoon of cloves. A teaspoon of baking soda. Now, we're gonna whisk it. A dump our flour mixture into whatever the other mixture we made was. We're gonna mix it all together. Put it in the fridge to cool. Sprinkle some flour down, and then we're gonna take our frozen dough. Now, you're gonna line your pan with parchment paper, and you're gonna take your cutout, and you're gonna flop it onto the tray. We're gonna take our sugar cookies, and we're gonna slide them into the oven. A rolling pin, and you're gonna roll out your dough. I'm gonna try and freehand this. If you have a cookie cutter, use that, definitely. These in the oven for nine to 10 minutes. Our gingerbread to the cooling rack. Now we're gonna make the icing for our melted snowman and our gingerbread cookies. All you need is confectioner sugar and water. A plastic bag and you're gonna scoop out your icing, fill it in your piping bag. We're gonna make like a fun little melty pattern. Now I'm gonna pipe the little snowman face on the marshmallow. I'm gonna stick your little face onto your icing and you can take your chocolate icing again and you can pipe little arms. Melted snowman sugar cookie is complete. Now we have our lovely little cookies. Oh. I'm Allie Magnus here at the Daily Ram. Happy holidays. Cheers. Allie, those cookies looked so good. Can you send me some, please? <laughs> I could definitely use the recipe myself. All right, coming up in our next segment, Gianna, Abby, and Chase show us all what their hometowns did for the holiday season in this year's holiday hometown show off. Yeah, it was really great. And the second I got home, I started filming my mom's decorations because she goes hard for the holidays. So I hope you guys enjoy what my house looks like. All right, let's check it out. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of The Daily Ram. In this segment, we're going to be showing you the holiday hometown edition, which is when producers upload footage about what they do in their hometown during the holidays. So check it out. So one of the biggest traditions during the holidays in my family is decorating our tree. 
As you can see, ours is huge this year. We didn't pick one up from a store. We actually cut it down for the first time in my life and it was a really good experience. So a big incorporation of our Christmas tree is um, homemade ornaments that we made since first grade to the eighth grade. I can show you some, I'll zoom in on them on the tree. And then another huge thing that my mom loves to do is put Santas all over the house. So I'll show you some clips of that too. Hi everyone, Abby here. Today I'll be taking you around my hometown to show you some lights and decorations they put up for the holidays. My favorite part about my hometown lights are the commons. You can walk down this path and see all the lights and decorations. It's so pretty. Wow, those were some really impressive holiday decorations. I would not have been able to pull that off. They were so amazing. Those concluded our segments of this episode. However, me and Evan just wanted to get a little more serious to talk about our head editor, Julia Madden. She is also graduating this semester. And I just wanted to say, Julia, I love you so much. You have been one of my best friends this semester and I definitely could not have done this without you. So thank you so much for helping out the Daily Ram and thank you so much for putting together these episodes because you worked wonders and there's nobody like you. Yeah, and Julia, although we haven't worked together all that long, you know, you've pulled this show together out of thin air during one of the most difficult times to produce a show like this in history, mm -hmm. so. You know, major props go to you, and I'm super excited to see what you do in the future. And, you know, uh, thank you for including me on this team. Mm -hmm. And it's been a wonderful ride. Yeah, we love you, Julia. Um, but anyway, this is the last episode of 2020. Like I said before, I hope you guys enjoyed. We will see you in 2021. Bye.